So the Giants are like kind of good, I think. Two and one, Brian Dable seems to be doing a good job, and Daniel Jones looks somewhat competent. At the very least, this season is going better for the Giants than we all expected, but that doesn't mean there isn't a ridiculous amount of drama in New York, and a lot of that is because of Kenny Galladay. Galladay was one of the top free agent wide receivers a year ago, and the Giants answered with $72 million for four years, and holy f that is looking like a big mistake. It hasn't been the best start to the season for Kenny Galladay. Truthfully, it maybe couldn't be going any worse. In week one, he played the most snaps of any Giants wide receivers, but he only had two targets all game and caught both of them for 22 yards. Week two was a very different story. Galladay was only on the field for two offensive snaps. Then, after the game, head coach Brian Dable said that he was going going to go with the guys that gave him the best chance to win each week. Kind of a dig at Galladay. It was weird because his game locker was empty after the game too. It was it was just odd. Galladay got another chance to prove himself in week three and got some snaps and he was ass. He had three targets, but he didn't catch a single one and had two drops. Just absolutely horrible. But don't worry, Giants fans, only three years left. Yeah, New York gave Galladay a four-year, $72 million contract. At the time, that felt fair. Now, it's the worst contract in football. $72 million. $18 million per year, about $1.06 million per game. Through week three, Kenny Galladay has made around $3.18 million or $1.59 million per catch or even $145,000 per yard. Not ideal. There is a potential out after next season that results in $6.8 million in debt. If Galladay is still in New York by 2024, I would be shocked. I seriously wonder if he'll be there for the rest of this season. Even before this year started, that contract was looking like a really shitty decision. The good news is that Kenny Galladay was the Giants' top receiver in 2021. The bad news is that that doesn't actually mean that he was good. Galladay was the only pass catcher with over 500 yards, and he barely had 500 yards. He only averaged 37 0.2 yards per game, only caught 48.7% of his targets, and even now, he still has never scored a touchdown for the Giants. Kenny Galladay has not scored a touchdown since October 4th, 2020, back when he was with the Lions. The contract looks bad, and you may be wondering, why the hell did the Giants ever give him that much money? But Galladay was good in Detroit. His last year with the Lions was a bit of a mess. It was the last year of his rookie deal, and he he ended up only playing in five games. He missed the first two games of the year with a hamstring injury and then suffered a hip flexor injury. That was in week nine and it caused him to miss the rest of the season. In those five games, he had 338 yards and two touchdowns. So yeah, Galladay wasn't great his last year in Detroit, but he was really, really good the two seasons prior. He literally led the league with 11 receiving touchdowns in 2019. He recorded about 1,200 yards on 65 catches and made the Pro Bowl. The season before, he really broke out for the first time with over 1,000 yards and five touchdowns on 70 catches. There was a point in time where Galladay was an absolute stud, but it's been a long time since that. Galladay was even pretty solid. He didn't end up playing in the Shrine game because of an injury, and then he was, I mean, he was pretty mediocre at the NFL Combine. But Galladay did have some private workouts, and one of them was with the Lions. The collegiate rise of Kenny Galladay kind of came out of nowhere. You know, he, he ended up enrolling at North Dakota, not North North Dakota State, just North Dakota, and had over 400 yards and a touchdown as a freshman. Then he broke out. He had over 884 yards and eight touchdowns in 2013. And after two years at North Dakota, he decided to transfer out to Northern Illinois, making that jump from the FCS to the FBS. He did have to sit out a year because of the transfer rules, but then he had over 1,100 yards and 10 touchdowns as a junior. And his final year in college, he was named first team all MAC after he had over 1,100 yards again and eight touchdowns. There was this clear trajectory of Kenny Galladay just getting better and better over the years, and the Detroit Lions really did capitalize on that, but the Giants just haven't had the same luck. New York has to have the absolute worst wide receiver situation in the league. 
And not because there isn't talent there, but it's just a mess. Kenny Galladay might not even be the most problematic wideout on the team. You could argue that it's Kadarius Tony. He has already had the most ridiculous career. The Giants literally took him in the first round last year, and it's been a disaster. He only had four receptions in the Giants' first three games, but then he kind of hit his stride. He had one insane game with 189 yards, but if you take away that one game, Tony only had 231 yards on the year, and he never found the end zone at all. There was hope that he could really progress and maybe break out this season, but it's not looking like it. He only played seven snaps in week one and only had 28 snaps in week two. He did have his only two catches of the year so far, but in total, he has zero yards. Zero. Tony didn't play in week three because of a hamstring injury, isn't expected to play in week four, and that's kind of where things stand. The Giants' top wide receiver through three weeks, Sterling Shepard, who does only have 154 yards and one touchdown, but still, he has been the number one. Well, he suffered a torn ACL and is done for the year. That leaves the only other player on the roster with over 100 receiving yards as Richie James, a 49ers 2018 seventh round pick. The Giants wide receiver situation is hilarious. Like the, the Kenny Galladay contract is bad because of the money, but the fact that New York needs receivers too makes it so much worse. The Giants have been trying David Sills, an undrafted guy in 2019, but he just hasn't done much. That leaves one other wide out, the guy who, I guess, might turn into the number one, maybe, Wandale Robinson. The Giants just took him in the second round, and he had a catch for five yards in week one, but he's been dealing with a knee injury and hasn't played since. But once he does come back, I do think he could be the top guy. Plus, Kadarius Tony is a talented dude. Uh, when he's on the field, he looks very explosive, but I just don't know what's going on there. It's so odd, but at the end of the day, one thing that we know for sure is that the Kenny Galladay experiment was a mistake. The Giants now have one very big question. What the hell do you do with Kenny Galladay? I mean, you could bench him. When he's been on the field, he hasn't brought much, and he's looked like a shell of his old self. I think the bigger question is if he's toxic. If having Kenny Galladay in the locker room is negatively affecting the Giants in general, New York has to get rid of him no matter what it takes. I have to bet that there's literally no chance he takes a pay cut, and eating all of his salary would suck. Even if the Giants did trade Galladay, New York would have to eat a lot of that money. That's the only way any team even thinks about agreeing to a deal. I'm not even quite sure what teams might want to trade for him, honestly. The Bears wide receivers are super weak and been shit, but honestly, that might be more of a Justin Fields issue, and maybe the Packers would take a shot on him. Green Bay could use a veteran that knows what he's doing. It's really just a tough spot. The Giants are in a very tough situation with Kenny Galladay. But one thing is for sure, he has the worst contract in the NFL. 